four different positions. The dude's a mediocre tight end. Bro, he's a mediocre, music, he's a mediocre tight end, but you know what? He still gets points passing you know the what? ball and he running the ball. He is the definition of a trash can. He's not even a kitchen trash can. That dude's a bathroom trash can. Hey, Barely what's gets your, used. What's your record in the league? Get, yeah, who's the fourth <laughs> highest scoring team in the league? Me. Suck Who? my peen. Throw well, who yourself just into t- the trash can, little buddy. Who just took over the number one spot, you boy? Who didn't ask? Who didn't ask? Me. Call Welcome back, flag. ladies and gentlemen, league. to another <laughs> episode. I'm rigging this league. You heard it here first. <laughs> no. record. I'm rigging this. It's first of all, gone. I'm we started this off. We started this off hot. Um, these two <laughs> arguing about <laughs> fantasy football. Obviously, since it's that time of the year. Um, but now we're on to baseball. We are talking about mm, college baseball. Um, for mm. today's podcast, we got a special guest for you, Leighton Marcy, who is again the senior coordinator for NCSA. Um, he works on recruiting and all that kind of stuff. So you get to hear a little bit um, about him, about him, um, kind of his journey into the recruiting process, and then talking about um, what his job entitles, all that kind of stuff. So um, if we're all done yelling at each other, without further ado. <laughs> Um, here no, is, I'm fired up. Here oh, is Leighton <laughs> Marcy. We have a special guest today, uh, Leighton Marcy, who is the senior, let me pull up the, the oh stats real quick, senior recruiting coordinator for NCSA. <laughs> um, nice little muzzy in the picture there. I like it. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Oh, just oh, wonderful. Peachy. Another another day. Is that a battle axe in your background? That That is, yes. Yeah. That is badass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the first question we kind of want to start off with is, um, so imagine yourself back in your college days. You got $8 to your name. Where are you going to eat? You got to get a meal in you. Where are you going? Oh, we're talking junior junior college days there. So basically, oh, that's that makes it tough. Yeah, it makes it tough because there wasn't a lot in the small town that I went to college in, so. Um, I guess there was, there was only like McDonald's there. And then, uh, I guess maybe the, the little cafe that was in town, that was like the, the burrito place, um, mm. that you can get the homemade burritos from. Oh, those, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. We have like one of those down snack. the street. Yeah. Oh man. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, um, <clears throat> kind of gave a little brief introduction there, but again, do you want to talk a little bit kind of about your, your playing days? Um, just kind of what made you choose to kind of go down this career path of being a recruiting coordinator? Yeah. Um, so I, I started off, I, I actually didn't get to play my senior year of high school because of an injury. I messed up my elbow quite a bit. I got two screws in it because of it. So um, didn't really get recruited out of high school because of that. Uh, so I ended up walking on at a JUCO, just picking a JUCO in state and walking on, didn't really get recruited at all nothing like that. So, um, and then the JUCO experience, it was a, it was an interesting one because I was a walk on, I wasn't really, uh, preferred over the scholarship players and stuff like that. So it was, it was kind of trying to fight my way through the, through everything. And I didn't really get the, the treatment that I, I felt like I deserved from it. So, Mm -hmm. um, but I ended up, uh, leaving the JUCO and then going to a, eventually went to a D2 school and ended up my baseball high or college baseball career at a D2 school at Metro state in Denver. So, and that actually ended up pretty well. We, we ended up going to the regionals and, and having a good time at that, my senior year there um, and doing really well. So, yeah. And uh, because of that recruiting journey that I went through, like it, it was a struggle getting to, I didn't get any coach for, didn't get any help from my coach at the JUCO to get to the D2 level. Didn't get any help from my high school coaches to get to the college level. Um, I kind of fell upon uh, this, this job called it's NCSA college recruiting. And basically what we do is we help kids get recruited for college. 
um, and we help them throughout the process. Uh, we give them the tools that they need to get recruited and give them the guidance and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's really, it's really kind of nice. I kind of wish I had it when I was in high school because I was it's like, I just want to keep on playing. I don't know how though, sort of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> oh, let me interrupt. I have a question. <laughs> no. Does, no, uh, no. You, you mentioned, how, yes, stop mm -mm. talking. Nope. Stop talking. Or I'm gonna have that battle axe get used on you virtually. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Godspeed. Uh, you, you mentioned how you, your organization kind of helps kids like walk through that path. Um, do you also, and this is probably really out there, but do you also like help college coaches in and of itself? Like, say their first year college coaches and they don't really have that recruiting. I guess background or they don't really know the reins of that yet. Do you kind of help with that or? Yeah, we actually do have a coach's side of things. So we, um, we do help college coaches find student athletes. That's actually the primary goal of our, our network uh, that we have is to help college coaches find student athletes. We actually on the baseball side of things specifically, we have 3000 plus coaches that okay. use our network. Damn. So wow. yeah. And that's, that's insane. Um, yeah, that's from the 1800 different programs. So that's the assistants and the the head coaches, all the from all all different tiers of college baseball there. So 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 you do other sports besides baseball then? Yeah, we do 34 different sports. Oh my god. Holy cow. <laughs> Cover. It's a big it. organization. Yeah, yeah, it's uh we just went public uh this past year. We got bought out by IMG Academy and everything. So we're we're kind of kind of big now. So Oh damn. So then to kind of go along with Mikey's question on like the coaches side of that, COVID was a huge, huge factor, obviously, on just trying to get into like touch with coaches with recruiting meetings and everything like that. How was that process for you guys as an organization that specifies in helping recruitment? How was COVID kind of an impact on you? And did you see like a number in growth? Did you see like a decrease in kids that were trying to fully get recruited? Like what was that, that situation, I guess? Yeah, it was a very difficult time for a lot of kids getting seen. Um, quite honestly, the, the way that kids had to get seen changed. It, it turned into basically everything being virtual. Um, so everything that kids had to put out there, it was video related. It was online related which works well with our network that we have set up because it's a, it's an online platform. It's similar to LinkedIn for college coaches. So it basically helps coaches find student athletes and helps them connect on a virtual, virtual basis. Um, and that's, that's kind of how, how it had to be during COVID because coaches weren't coming out to games. They weren't coming out to tournaments, showcases, anything like that. They, mm -hmm. they, they had to find what they had to find online. So it was, it, actually, we had a, a a couple of record months during COVID just because of that. Um, we had kind of kids flooding in. And since then, we have we jumped from before COVID, we would help about 26, 27,000 kids get to the next level for college. Holy cow. And then after COVID, it's jumped up to 30,000 plus now. Jesus Christ. Now, that's a got nothing to do with it, Mike. Shit. No, he's got everything to do with this. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's really skyrocketed over the past couple of years because of COVID, but also kids are just wanting to get more recruited. And we did also see a fall off that when kids weren't getting seen, they ended up losing out on their process and not getting to go play college ball and stuff like that, so. Well, and do you think like the virtual level, especially nowadays with the technology that we had, there was the experience of COVID-19 to where it was everything in the world became virtual. It wasn't just sports. It was everything. Mm -hmm. So now taking a look at it, do you think that the virtual side does have a little bit of a benefit because a coach, yes, can see in the stands how a kid hits a curveball, but at the same time when he has a video of it and he can slow it down and break down all of his movement for like 10 different at-bats, do you think that's more beneficial for a recruitment process? Quite honestly, yeah. Um, and with coaches, uh, it also saves them money. It saves mm -hmm. them money on on the recruiting. They can put the money into where they really need it in when their recruiting processes. Um, and we've kind of seen that with even the bigger schools, the the top name schools like uh, I guess Vanderbilt. Even um, 
a lot of those coaches, they're 95% of recruiting starts online with what coaches see on, on student athletes. Mm -hmm. So, and then from there, that's where they go and see kids in person and actually come and watch them in person. So it, it really does affect the way that they, they look at kids and COVID's kind of changed the way everything's been with, with recruiting and how kids get seen, especially. So. Awesome. Do you think that <clears throat> just to kind of build off of like the showcase side of things, um, that kids will start to just do this instead, like be able to put their measurables up just on a recruitment site rather than visiting like four or five showcases in like a fall or something like that? I think kids will always do showcases because it gets them out there, gets mm -hmm. them playing and gets them going because without that, there's also the fact that, Hey, they're, they're not getting out there as much. So sure. doing the showcases, it, it, it is good, but there's also extra work that needs to be done prior to those showcases to get recognized by coaches. And that's where the online platforms and all that reach out and everything like that comes into play. Mm -hmm. So. So to kind of touch on that as well, because you said that you didn't have a major help, whether it was from the JUCO route or even getting to JUCO from your coaches on the recruiting side. And obviously, like we've stated, you work with a whole recruiting platform to get to those steps from a kid has been seen at a showcase. There are coaches interested. He is on your site or he maybe hasn't gone to a showcase before. If you could walk us through the process without giving away all the secret algorithms and everything like that, what is the process for you guys trying to help the student athlete out? Yeah. Um, so basically the, the first step that we do is actually my, my call to a student athlete and their family, and it's to qualify them mm -hmm. and to make sure that they're within standards because if they're not – of the standards of college coaches, then they can't be put out in front of college coaches first and foremost. Um, after my call originally, we actually set student athletes up with what's called a recruiting assessment, which okay. actually helps the student athletes go out with a game plan, helps educate the family and the student athletes in the recruiting process. And we actually walk through the profiles with you got with the families, mm -hmm. um, make sure that everything is verified on there for coaches, make sure that it's all correct. And that's how we get the information out to the college coaches as well. That is, that is all stuff that we do actually at no cost too to families too. So oh, that's, sweet. Yeah, that's that's all stuff that we do to help them out and get the process started. Um, on top of that, we have the extra tools and services, uh, memberships uh, where we have we provide video help for families, SAT, ACT prep. We also get exclusive roster openings from college coaches. So say a college coach is looking for a first baseman. <clears throat> um, they, they send it to us. And so I was actually looking at that a little bit earlier for another student athlete. There's currently for the 2023 class, there's 312 first basemen still available. Roster oh, wow. Yeah. Of the 1800 programs, there's 312 kid or 312 coaches are looking for first basemen still. So, and that, and that's just looking for them before even getting a fall ball and tryouts. Like they need a full replacement. Now that, that is impressive that you yeah, can actually get those numbers broken down. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're actually, there's coaches that are sending out the 2026s and even 2027s at this point too, right now. So Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, that's where it gets really <laughs> and, Walking uh, up to a sixth grader and just like, Hey, you ready to play? You ready to play ball? Yeah. Yeah. You're going now. Corbin walks up in a full bandy and says, Hey, you like a jail suit? Here you go. We got the Jersey for you. Everything sign here. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's, it's crazy how early it started. I mean, there's, there's kids that are in eighth grade right now getting committed to colleges. So it's. it's insane. And, and just, just to clarify, cause I want to, I want to stir the pot a little bit here. Cause I would love to get opinions on everybody on this. Kids get recruited in eighth grade and are already signing or not really signing, but giving a verbal commitment in eighth grade. Does that ruin the kid's mind on whether it be football, baseball, basketball, whatever? Because I know that baseball, it's a little bit kind of more common to see a recruit coming out of eighth grade and like freshman year of high school. But do you think it's more beneficial for the student to already kind of have an idea that, hey, this school is looking at me in eighth grade like I'm a top kid in the country. This is what we got. Or do you think it should be a little bit more on the silent level and kids should be kind of 
focusing on just trying to get to the next level and not worry about eight years down the road. I mean, quite honestly, it, it's, it's kind of nice to see the kids getting like them knowing who's interested mm-hmm. because when that's the problem that a lot of these kids have is they don't know who's interested. They don't know if anybody's interested in them. Mm-hmm. So with the select few, I mean, it's, it's like a 1% margin of these kids that are getting recognized at this, this eighth grade level and ninth grade level, but them getting recognized that early and, and showing that they're getting recognized that early, that, that helps them out kind of their mindset. Hey, I'm, I'm good enough automatically to play at this next level. Now it's just getting there, mm-hmm. work hard to get there in the next couple of years to get to that level. So that that's kind of my thoughts on it because a lot of these kids that I've talked to, they don't know who, who's interested in them. They don't know if anybody's interested in them. And a lot of the kids, they haven't been seen. So they yeah. nobody is interested in them. Nobody knows who they are. So it, it's really going from the flip side. I, I talked to a, actually a 2026 20, uh, freshman today who had three offers for baseball, but he mm-hmm. wanted to play football in college. Mm-hmm. So, and he's, he's getting his profile up and running for football side of things, but he has already three offers from division one schools for baseball, but so it must be nice. It must yeah. be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's freaking awesome that there's a whole program now that's developed to that. Because, I mean, speaking from just being all three of us, like I know the recruiting process was a little – it was a little tough, like just trying to figure out who's interested, where we can go. And so that's huge that you guys do that for these kids. Like that's yeah. thoroughly impressive. Yeah, it definitely helps a lot of kids. I mean, obviously the the numbers speak for themselves with the three thousand thirty thousand kids that get committed each year. So, mm-hmm. but yeah. So, what would you say um, to a younger kid that's um, kind of thinking of playing in the next level, both as a former player and as a recruiting agent? What would you say um, is one of the biggest things going in, and what what they can prepare for? Um, I, I would say the biggest thing is to start early with a lot of these kids, you see it where they're getting started way too late. And then like there's a 2024, 2023, that's in their dream school is to play at like Georgia Vanderbilt or something or something like that. And they have nothing, they have no contact, no offers, nothing at that point in time. And it's just like, if you guys started this in 2026 when, when, or like a couple of years ago, when you guys were freshmen, um, you might have a couple offers at this point, you might have something on the table. The, the earlier you start in baseball, especially the, the better, because that's, you're going to get seen more. And as far as the recruiting process for baseball coaches, they start tracking kids. They don't necessarily like send out offers all the time. The D one schools they do, but even JUCO, NAIA, D3, D2, they start tracking kids, tracking prospects as early as, as eighth grade, tracking who, who they want to follow, who they want to track, sending out camp invites and stuff like that. I, I've seen multiple kids who are getting camp invites from D2, D3 schools at, at ninth and eighth grade, um, and they don't know where they're coming from, but it's because their schools are tracking them, and those mm-hmm. schools are tracking their progress. <clears throat> Um, another big thing is the, the two biggest roadblocks that families run into and kids run into number one, distance away from home. And number two is playing the name game in the schools Mm. Being focused on those big D ones, those bandies, those Florida's, those, uh, coastal Carolinas, all those big D one names that only the top kids go to there. So the best option for you as a young kid is keep your options as open as possible. Don't get focused in on the one big name school that you want to go to. Make sure you have the options open because there's 1,800 programs out there for baseball and only 300 are Division One. So there's 1,500 different programs from different levels that you can go to and that are sometimes a better fit for you because you get more playing time, you get more reps, you get more exposure. And you might even, the, the fact that 
if your goal is to get drafted, the funny thing is division one only, uh, I think the stat was 13% of division one kids that get drafted end up making an MLB. And it's about, I think 10% division two, II, division three kids that get drafted, make it to the MLB. So it, the percentage is only 3% difference there. And it's really just, you got to find that right fit of college and got to find that right fit of school. Because if you don't find that right fit of school where you're getting the playing time, you're not going to get, get seen. You're not going to get that exposure. You're not going to get playing time. You're not going to play the game you love. So. Right. Very well said. That, Very yeah. well said. The Yankees rehearsed that a few times. <laughs> he's hit his selling points for sure. He's, yeah. he's got the script on the back wall behind laptop. Read this line. No, yeah. that was not robotic. I heard it all from uh, – I had the longest conversation with Don Mitchell. I worked a perfect game event with him. And uh, Don Mitchell, he's the he was the scouting director for the Di- uh, Diamondbacks during the 2001 World Series. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the scouting director for the Braves during the 94 World Series. Um, and, uh, he had this long conversation with all the kids about her thing and talked my ear off during the perfect game event. So all my stats and everything that I have is all from him because he's just, he just laid it in there on me. I'm like, wow, holy cow. There's a lot that goes into it. So. Perfect. Safe perfect, to say perfect. he's been around the game a little bit <laughs> yeah, folks. Yeah, I'd say you could probably trust what he says if he does anything there. <laughs> For sure. Do you get to meet a lot of like that kind of big names when you're going out to different events like that? Do you see a lot of that out there? Yeah. Um, I mean, with perfect game events, you you do run into like Don Mitchell and a couple of big name guys out there. Um, I've also worked other sport events as well. I worked a USA water polo event. And uh, some, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of the women's gold medalist team was there, and they're all six two, six three, and above. And I'm just like, oh, wow. <laughs> all right, it's Amazons. That's why you're you're a gold medalist. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think they gotta use their tippy toes in the pool. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well. Is that all the questions that we have for Leighton? No, it's not actually. I was yeah, waiting for you kind of taken like a backseat this entire time. Yeah, because <laughs> you just been, been talking his ear off. <laughs> well, My we goodness. like him to take the floor, man. Well, I'd like for you Go to ahead, shut Mikey. up. You know what? Yeah, <laughs> stop talking. Mute yourself right now. I want to see the icon. Mute it. No, I'm not going to mute it. You go ahead. Just talk. Good lord. Uh you. you so you mentioned camps and, and whatnot. Uh, what it? How do you? I mean, obviously, you know, you work for your recruiting organization, but with there's a lot of at least talk that I've heard with kids speculating or parents speculating that camps are just a money grab. What is like? What is your thought process and all of that? So there, there is two types of camps that coaches send out, um, and I tell parents this all the time. There's the direct camp invites that you'll see that's very personalized. Like say, hey, Johnny, I saw you at um, this showcase. I want to take a better look at you at my camp or I'd like you to come out to my camp this summer sort of thing. Those those typically are a coach saying, hey, I've recognized you and I want to take a better look at you. And then there are the generic camps that coaches send out that do help fund their programs and do help basically fund their coaching staff. That's how they fund their assistant and graduate assistants and, and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of the times with those camps, they are good for exposure. They're good for getting yourself out there and and getting used to that scene as well. If you've never done a camp before, it's definitely worth going um, because it gets you used to talking to coaches, talking to other people and, and communicating. Because if you're not good at talking to a coach and you're the first time you talk to a coach is your senior high school and you're not good at it, that coach is going to be like, Okay, I'm not sure if I want to get this guy anymore because he can't talk to me. So getting getting that ball rolling early and getting out to those camps, getting out to those showcases, knowing how to talk to people and communicate with coaches, quite honestly, it, it helps out the kids, even if they are the funding camps. It, it is good to exposure 
as long as you're doing stuff prior to the camp too. Um, because if you're not doing stuff like reaching out to the coaches prior to the camp or putting some information out there online prior to the camp, kid's not going to be seen at the camp. He's just going to be another number. Gotcha. Damn. Gotcha. The, the other, the only other question I have is uh, obviously, you know, talent will, will take you as far as it can, but I know we have for our listeners, we have a, we have a wide variety of, um age and, and just demographic and stuff of that nature so excluding talent what based off of what you've seen and like where players go what is like the the common denominator with them like are they all physically built like do they hit the gym every week or like what are the characteristics that student athletes that go pretty high it doesn't have to necessarily be d like d1 what what is i guess the common one with with all the athletes that you've seen commitment their commitment to the game their passion for the game is the biggest thing i mean i've seen a, a kid who's 5'4 120 pounds soaking wet go off and play at a at a d3 school that was actually pretty good d3 school and get a get a good hefty scholarship i actually he was one of the first kids i talked to when i got the job at ncsa um and he actually got a, about a twenty thousand dollar scholarship to go and play at a d3 school and he was five four and he had nothing going into his senior year um and then you see a kid who's six three uh 200 pound catcher who's got a pop time of a 2.0 but it's kind of lazy and wishy-washy doesn't have full commitment he ends up going to a juco that's not very good and not getting any scholarship money um, it, the biggest thing is commitment. If you have the passion to do it and you have the passion to play, you're going to get there. You, there's a spot for you. A coach will find a spot for you. Um, if you have that passion and show him you have that passion, a coach will, will take an opportunity and, and take that because they want to push that passion and push that, um, drive in their program. Cause that's, that's the kind of kids that they want around, uh, to build up that culture that they have. So Damn. Awesome. You say stacked. damn after everything? I do damn. say damn after damn. everything. Yeah. Got problems. <clears throat> Maybe. Good. Meet know. yourself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you respectfully if, stop. If you if you can't tell, we have a lot of personality on this podcast. Oh, and it, it flares. I certainly from time try to, time. to. Mikey, you were supposed to ask him a question about uh your sticker that you're gonna have for the next Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously <laughs> you you see there's no camera here. What should Nick put as my picture in the past we've done uh bob is it bob the tomato bob the from, tomato bob yep. the tomato from and a strawberry and a strawberry a strawberry what else have we done I feel like that's one it more. no right. that's it he's okay. a ginger that's all you really excluding need to know excluding penises because you can't choose that <laughs> as an option this, we'll is a family friendly podcast. this is a family-friendly podcast <clears throat> that's that's a good question uh hmm I have a beautiful picture of Josh next to a sign that says no come. That. <laughs> no, we cannot do that. Why? It's the word no, it was the no word, gum. The word but no the, gum. The G is the G. scratched. Yeah. So it says no cum. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, uh, you got me on the ginger kick, so I'm thinking of like All right. ginger uh, All right. like, me characters because I got daughters and stuff, so – like my my mindset on like putting brave on his on his uh damn <laughs> damn that's damn. happening that's, all right that's going that one's happening that's going all right that's a great one lane thank you <laughs> i'm not a fan of this <laughs> get wrecked make oh, sure it's a full gosh. dress and everything yes oh, yeah. it has to be the it dress is. it gotta has to be the dress throw in Absolutely. a scottish accent too oh if, bro, <laughs> imagine if i had one you know how funny i'd be that would be so oh, bad, dude. Perfect. I would be. I don't think I'd get through an episode anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if that's all we got for you, Leighton, we appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for coming, stopping by, and yeah, shooting it with us. Me. Yeah, thank you very much. And that was our interview. Um, again, had some really insightful points talking about recruiting. Um, and a little plug from him, just kind of texted him. Um, he wanted to give out his work number um, just in case anyone was thinking recruiting wise of reaching out again, his initial assessment is free. 
Um, his number is for his work is 312 579 2597. And he said you could put that on there. So, yeah, because apparently we do free <laughs> advertising on this podcast now. Shout out Absolutely. Flintstone Gummies. Yeah, uh, we're we're Flintstone doing Flintstone free gummies. <laughs> Where's our Flintstone Gummies, Nick? Huh? Seriously, where are we on that? We're just. Dude, I have not seen an email. From free advertising at all. everywhere. Free advertising. Free advertising for this. This coming free from Flintstone Gummies. Free advertising for Cabela's. Apparently, what? What are we, bro? We're not going to get bro, anywhere. Legit. Oh, on the we the amount of effort we put into this. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> and we're just free advertising everywhere. The best part is when we mentioned that we were going to put that in there. He goes, "Why doesn't he get some of that IMG money and put it towards that?" <laughs> Yeah, kick <laughs> us some, bro, so then we can buy some plus <laughs> on gummies, put it on here, and then kick them some dough. Max. We at least appreciate. Over- hey, stop hold talking. On, the- stop, stop talking. Hold the fuck. Gosh, mute him right now. I don't no, know no, how to do that. Mute him. <laughs> mute him. That's mute outside him. of my paycheck. No, at least, so. he is w- at least he is willing to advertise on yeah, the show, least, whether it be you're free lacking. or not. You are a terrible marketing manager. <laughs> what do you mean? Why? Are we not sponsored by Flintstone Gummies? Dude, do you know how much you know? Do you what know the doing? loopholes? There is so Find much them. shit that Why I don't you go, just go through them? Find them. I'm trying, exactly. man. Create an orphan. I've been trying to contact these asshole. guys for, for like I can't do this anymore. Mikey is an agent of chaos, I swear. I'm an agent then, of <laughs> anger right now. <laughs> then just go put it on the hub. Put us on the hub. You won't get us there. <laughs> this poor marketing manager. I'm telling you. Well, let's be real though. He's given us unfactual information. So by him saying that he was gonna find somebody for us to be sponsored by, is him giving us unfactual information. So game I set match. Doesn't make game it right. Match. Does not make it right. Hit the showers. I am furious for multiple reasons. <laughs> multiple. <laughs> I am three and six in fantasy football. <laughs> and I, with and it circles back to fantasy football. Here's the thing, though. You Anthony want to live this? Is, you deserve out this. Of his you deserve Yankees. this because Brian you rigged Cashman the league last is a year. Terrible GM. Aaron Boone is a terrible manager. Josh Donaldson. Absolutely no, atrocious <laughs> third baseman. Shouldn't even should, needs to retire. Should have retired three years ago. Aaron Hicks is not even a baseball <laughs> player. <laughs> <laughs> That dude's a bald-headed basketball. He's got, he's got more stable knees than I do, so I'll give him that. And he's probably faster. Everybody does. And he makes more money. Didn't ask you, little buddy. There's just so much heat coming off. I'm three angry. Or a three day I'm absolutely furious. You. The one thing I had going for me good this weekend was the Bengals winning. You know what came of that? Joe Mixon getting getting absolutely five, annihilated. Just but he, absolutely he played against Joe everybody. Mixon. He played I against Joe Mixon this week. I didn't trash, bro. I played against Joe in two leagues, bro. <laughs> bro, I win my other league if Joe Mixon doesn't. If Joe Mixon even scored two touchdowns, I was still golden. That's fine. I look, you can take Joe's. Oh you, this guy can take Joe Mixon off his lineup completely, and I still lose by <laughs> double digits. Oh my gosh! I looked at the score for my other league, and it said Joe Mixon was at like thirty-five. Devontae Adams was at thirty-six, and I'm like, oh. Devontae Adams is going to get more touches in the second half. I don't care what Mixon does because I'll be fine. Adams stopped at like 37 or some shit like that. 45 at halftime. 45. Good Lord. He stopped playing in the third quarter. <laughs> well, it's insane. Uh, since, since you're already here, please uh, like and subscribe <laughs> our channel. My heart no is place like home. On fire like the Bengals right now. <laughs> you can also find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. At uh, no place like Omaha. Well, uh, shout out Cronio Media. Serious. On all platforms, I'm upset. Uh, also, in the comments, please let us know um, who else you would like to see on our pod. Um, we continue uh, to try and get more guests on the show, um, especially during this downtime of the off season. Um, so again, just trying to reach out to who we can and, and continue to put people on here for you guys. And also um, again, topics you guys want us to talk about. Exactly. Like we post that on as well. social media. Not fantasy your... football. Yeah, not fantasy football because mm. we'll yell at each other. We about are that, a baseball like, podcast. I'm already upset. Yeah. Whatever um, topics baseball, you want us to cover. But we got to be more specific. College baseball. College baseball. Because I'll get baseball. upset with MLB. 
So let's keep yeah. it to college. You got upset about Old Dominion, know. so that was bullshit. They should have been in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know every player at the college level. I have favorites. Old Dominion is, is the top favorite. And if they don't make the playoffs again, so help me, Jesus Christ. We need to we need to they next can go two season. and forty eight. Free old Dominion, dude. <laughs> they can go two and forty eight this year. They better make playoffs. That's all I'm saying. We should like for next better year. Better than the Iona. Get, like, jerseys. Yeah, better than Iona. <laughs> Watch Iona next year. We've been talking so much shit. They're gonna come out and be like fifty five and four. Please imagine? take take a sound clip from one of us just talking absolute smack about him and just make a hype video off that dude we i would go back be through, so like, down the first four episodes and we can do finally when iona won and we're clapping it up and then just bounce right into all their highlights and just horrible l's <laughs> we can compare just last year to this year strikeout, strikeout 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 <laughs> <laughs> or sword or, or hear me out we put a dumpster as their highlight and then the next the next side by side Put a first place trophy. There we go. They won the or, toilet bowl or a participation medal. One, oh, because that's what I'm it. gonna get this year in like, fantasy. Please, yeah, this podcast. I don't even say. think he'll get that, but I'm in an 11. Nick, <laughs> listen to this bullshit. It's gonna I, finish with this. I won last week. Yeah, and, and he went down in the standings. <laughs> In the league I that all three of in, us are in. I was yeah. in 10th place. They well, I won. It went to 11. <laughs> How did that make any fucking sense? That's that's funny. <laughs> well, you can just <laughs> title this title you this can... episode three and six. Three and six. Mikey's team crap. Special three guest Lake Marcy. Yeah, yeah, three and six. <laughs> My God. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, it's been fun, it's been real, it has yeah. not been real fun. Ridiculous, my record's gonna be uh, playoff start week 14, got five weeks left. What am I gonna go on the five-week stretch? My guess is going five, but <laughs> we'll see you guys later.